The top stories. Minister admits the layoff blunders. The Commonwealth Baton ends its Barbados run. And Chris Gale is back for the Wendy's. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, March the 6th, 2014. At Courts, every day we bring affordability, convenience, innovation, and style to over 1 million customers in 11 countries. From homes to communities, we are proud to make a difference in the lives of many across the region. Courts, bringing value home. The Labor Minister has confessed that the continuing retrenchment of public officers has exposed weaknesses in how government deals with workers. Senator S. Tobias Sokou's comments follow complaints by labor unions about the government's handling of the layoffs. She spoke at a conference of human resource managers. Dr. Bias Sokou also issued a warning to laid-off workers to actively seek work through the National Employment Bureau or risk being disqualified from unemployment benefits. Scores of ecstatic cheering school children were the main spectators along the route of the Barbados leg of the Queen's Baton Relay, which is leading up to the Commonwealth Games. In a brief ceremony at Government House preceding the official start of the run, Governor General Sir Elliot Belge presented the baton to the president of the Barbados Olympic Association, Steve Stout, in the presence of sports officials and diplomats. It then took a route to the Olympic Association's headquarters at the Garfield Sobers Sports Complex. Among those presented with the baton was Sir Gary himself. The baton is touring all 70 nations and territories of the Commonwealth on its nine-month journey, which will culminate at the opening ceremony of the Glasgow Games on the 23rd of July. $20 million is what the government says it will cost to install air bridges at the Grant Lee Adams Airport. An air bridge is, of course, an enclosed movable connector which extends from an airport terminal gate to an airplane, allowing passengers to board and disembark without going outside. Officials say such a facility would not only be a real convenience for travelers, but it would help Barbados in its quest to become a fully accessible destination for disabled passengers. Minister of Tourism Richard Seeley says the government has to try to find the most efficient and cost-effective way to get people on and off aircraft. A ceremony has been held in Barbados to mark the first anniversary of the death of Hugo Chavez after 14 years as Venezuela's president. Organizations such as the Friends of Venezuela Solidarity Committee and the Cuban Barbadian Friendship Association held what was dubbed an African spiritual ceremony at Pelican Village to celebrate the life of Mr. Chavez. Sitting up front on Wednesday night were Venezuela's ambassador, Jose Gonzalez Febres, founder of the Clement Payne movement, David Comichon, and Pan-Africanist David Denny and Robert Bobby Clark. There were solidarity messages and songs. An anniversary parade was also held in Caracas, where Mr. Chavez is buried. The anniversary was marked at a time of tension in Venezuela, with people staging daily anti-government demonstrations. And news about our neighbors now, bacon shark is a very popular street food in Trinidad and Tobago, as many of you may know, but conservationists want to put an end to it. The local Papa Bois conservation group has launched a shark saving campaign trying to stop locals and tourists from eating the popular delicacy of deep fried shark sandwiches. It's now pushing for a ban on the catching and trading of the marine predators to help protect the fast dwindling population. Group director Mark de Vertel has acknowledged that the sandwiches are practically a national dish. But at the same time, he says most people simply don't understand that sharks are threatened with extinction. Call Marshall the Minister of the Road. The entertainer won his sixth road march title in Trinidad and Tobago with his song Ministry of the Road or More. And a great carnival season for him. He also won the Power Soko Monarch with his Road March winner and was second in the Groovy Soko Monarch competition with Happiest Man Alive. The Grenada government is struggling to find funding to meet arrears of back pay to restive public officers. Members of the Teachers Union wore red arm bands or union t shirts on Wednesday in what the union said was the first stage of protest action. The government said it was seeking external funding for almost $9 million Barbados dollars owed to public officers. It's also asking trade unions to accept a three-year wages freeze as it seeks to enter an IMF agreement. Sport is next. The history, the legacy, the rivalry, the passion. We versus them. 
West Indies versus England. Three T20s, March 9th, 11th, and 13th at the Mecca. We versus them. We are the West Indies. Chris Gale is back in the West Indies squad for the three 2020 internationals against England at Kensington Oval, the first of which is on Sunday. Gale missed the one-day international leg of the English visit because of injury. Dwayne Smith is the other Barbadian in the 15-man squad named after the West Indies lost the one-day series 2-1 in Antigua. West Indies, you know, are the World 2020 champions and will use the three matches as preparation for their defense of the title in Bangladesh starting next month. Sports was brought to you by We vs. Them, West Indies vs. England series. And finally, an 18-year-old student in New Jersey has launched a lawsuit against her parents over school fees and living expenses in a case that could set a precedent for a family's obligation to support a child who has left home. Rachel Cannon is seeking tuition money for her final high school semester and university fees after her parents cut off her financially after a row. Retired Police Chief Sean Canning and his wife Elizabeth say their daughter voluntarily left home because she did not want to abide by reasonable household rules such as being respectful, keeping a curfew, doing few chores, and then in a relationship with a boyfriend her parents claim is a bad influence. They say that shortly before she turned 18, she told her parents that she would be an adult and could do whatever she wanted. Ms. Canning lost the first round of the case when a judge denied a request to have her parents temporarily resume paying her expenses. That's Nation News for Thursday. Look out for the Weekend Nation with all the big news ahead of the Sandy Lane Gold Cup on Saturday.